A promising start for VGK in Vancouver last night. But once again, the Golden Knights cannot hold a lead. Our reacts next, coming up right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi again, everyone. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. We appreciate you doing so. And make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Locked On Golden Knights. We are brought to you today by FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On. New customers get $150 in bonus bets, guaranteed. The Vancouver Canucks defeated the Golden Knights last night at the Rogers Center for the first time ever last night right uh vgk blowing that two to nothing lead and the golden knights are again searching for answers for a second game in a row in fact the golden knights scoring a couple of goals two goals on two shots early on vgk scored twice on the power play last night but they give up a couple of power play goals in return and the vancouver canucks won that game last night four to three another vgk loss Connor Garland scoring the game winner for Vancouver. The Golden Knights were pushed around again in the blue paint area. And the Canucks, Chris, they clinch the first road, uh, first home, first round home ice advantage. Jeez. Easy for you to say. Exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot to dig into, but just quick reactions i think i'm gonna go right to the post game and coach cassidy and this is something that's been bothering me as a fan as a podcaster not an entertainer not, not an general. entertainer no. um but it's like the golden knights right now are just expecting everything and while this wasn't being said a whole lot at least from the team or, or the tv or anything like that the new narrative now among the fans at least this is what they're holding out hope for is game 83 the playoffs when they start on april the 21st or 20th whenever the golden knights will start it's like all of a sudden it's gonna be a different team the lights are gonna go on and they're gonna just be last year's stanley cup winners and they very well might be i mean it is a veteran team they know what it takes to win they know what it takes to survive a regular season or they might not i mean the golden knights were in very good form down the stretch from the all-star break on and the golden knights have had some good pockets but they haven't had consistent play you've you've talked a lot about your third period um about the third period goal um not differential but how many goals the golden knights have given up in the third zero last night that's a that's a win right there i'm kind of shocked at that one um but they also weren't going against a team pushing too hard but long story longer there's just it's very relaxed in the golden knights locker room right now maybe they're okay with um being wild card one or two and matching up against Dallas or Vancouver in the first round. And, you know, if they're okay with that, then fine coast right in and hopefully the lights will go on when the playoffs start, but it's, there should be some concern right now. There should be a lot of concern right now. I don't feel like there's any. No. And uh, VGK losing to a team last night that played a rookie and Arthur's sell offs who uh, saved 23 of 26 shots on net. And for Vancouver, this is the first time that they have beaten a playoff team since the Demko injury, since he went down. So that's pretty interesting. And then Logan Thompson on the other end of the ice faced 30 shots, gave up four goals once again. But net front presence for Vancouver was a key in this game. Really fast. They lost to a goalie with eight NHL games appeared in. And he didn't look that good. But, I mean, he got the job done. So credit to them. But, I mean... The, the net front presence certainly is the elephant in the room in today's podcast, and that'll be the word of the day if we're still tracking that sort of thing. Um, and the that one, that's only one word, elephant in the room. Okay. I don't know if for our podcast, it's definitely word of the one day. Word, definitely okay. one word. It's a must win game. Is that um, the room or DA? The room? I don't know. Initials, you said it's initials, so fast. initials. We got to save the, save the Twitter uh, characters. So. It's, we've talked about this how many times, Tony, whether it's a penalty kill, whether it's not a penalty kill, where the 
other team is scoring goals and they show that camera that hangs right above the crease and you see no one necessarily around the goaltender. Well, last night there were bodies in front of the goaltender and the goal nights weren't doing, doing anything about it. Um, Nick Haig was just out muscled repeatedly. I put a tweet out there. This wasn't a net front battle, but there was a play in Dakota Joshua. The dude's a beast. Like I'm not going to take anything away from him for his size, but it was just a play in the corner in the third period. Nick Haig is full possession of the puck. Nick Haig comes in at uh what six six two forty versus Dakota Joshua six three two oh six, and Dakota Joshua just throws him right off the puck like a rag doll. And Haig had a couple other ones. Um, minus two. In, what's that? Minus two, minus two. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean we'll we'll see if uh, Hutton draws in for Haig on um on Wednesday's game. I feel there's a good chance unless uh. Unless uh, Peter Angelo comes back by here, I don't don't think he traveled for the trip. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens there. But we want to talk about the goal where Pedersen is screening Logan Thompson. And there's a couple of takes here. First of all, we talked about this on Twitter yesterday. The blue paint crease rule is gone. A player can go into the crease before the puck arrives as long as they are not impeding the goalie's ability to play their position. Pedersen had perfect position. Nick Hague. Nick Haig was marveled by his perfect position because he just watched him stand there. But Pedersen had perfect position, screen, takes away Logan's eyes, puck winds up in the back of the nets. Two things on Logan right there. One, you got to fight through the screen. Logan, this is what kept Malcolm Subban from having a long NHL career. Subban could not fight through a screen to save his life. Logan Thompson is kind of starting to go down that path. But this is where Logan's, and he's got over 100, 100 games appeared in, I believe, now. So he's an experienced goaltender. But this is where you need some gamesmanship. If there is a player in your grill, even though they have established their position, if they are in your crease, which Pedersen had both of his skate blades, it's not like he was on the tip of the crease. He was completely submerged in the crease. If Logan just skates into him and creates that contact, they're going to reverse that call 10 out of 10 times. You cannot just stand in the goalie's crease if the goalie is trying to get to a position. So I think that's where Logan's inexperience worked against him a little bit last night. Yeah, and Logan's got to push the players out of the crease as well himself. Ron, He's got to be more physical. Ron He's physical. Just take out one player's eight leg and it's done. They'll stop. They'll stop. Well, even I'm Mark sorry. Andre Fleury, who's not the most physical, will be in there hacking away and, and pushing people. 100%. Out 100%. of the crease, and that's something that they're missing. They're missing the grit factor right now, right? They're not just playing tough in front of the crease. And they I don't got quite a that back it. in the second in the second um, segment. We'll talk about that, thankfully. But besides yeah. that, you're right. Yeah, and we recall that the Golden Knights did respond uh, very well here in Las Vegas. Uh, this time, the Canucks responded with the two goals after VGK lit the lamp twice. Jack Eichel two goals in the game. Now up to 63 points. Um, that line was playing well. They were buzzing last night in that game. But outside of that, you know, VGK just really, I don't know what it is. What could it be? Is it the mental aspect where they just, they score goals and they think they can coast? What happens after they build leagues, leads in these games? Because then they just falter after that. And okay, hey, luckily. No goals giving up in the third period, but no response from VGK on the other hand. A lot of things. I mean, just go, I'm go, going through my tweets from last night. Kind of paints a picture of the game here. Um, small thing, right? Golden Knights get a shot on net, and there's a scrum afterwards. Haig and Hannafin both jump into the scrum. When the attacking team's defense joins a scrum, the faceoff goes outside, outside to the neutral zone. It's... Again, you can't give up precious ice like that at this stage of the game. And it is it is a lot of mental errors right now. It's a lot of goaltending errors right now. It's, I mean, there's a list of things right now. And really quick, going back to, to Cassidy's post game, he's talking about Logan not pushing out in front of the crease, which is kind of my statement about him creating that contact. And then Coach Cassidy says, well, once a player is in, they have established their position. There's not a lot you can do in today's NHL about that. BS, coach. I no, call I BS agree. on that one, a thousand percent. You get in there, you earn, someone has to earn that position. And you know what? If you wind up dropping someone on their keister and you draw an interference penalty, fine. 
they might think twice before they do it again. Like that's that's part of the grit, Tony. I think that you're referring to right there. And there were some positive sides of the game. I mean, this isn't going to be a complete crap on the Golden Knights fest. Uh, like we said, we'll talk more about Hurdle in the second in the second segment. Stevenson well in the faceoff circle. Eichel's finding ways to score and lead the team and such. And I don't know. I don't know where you go from here. Like it's it's they're expecting the light just to turn on. It's it's the, it's the New Year's Eve. I, I, this is another analogy I made a couple of weeks ago. It's New Year's. It's New Year's Eve, right? You know, you've had a you've had a rough year. You're behind on some bills. Your your work situation isn't going well. You maybe you got some problems at home. But the second January first comes, all those problems magically poof, they go away like fairy dust. They they never existed. And I kind of think that's what's happening right now. I really think April nineteenth, the, the day after the regular season ends. I think uh, and it starts at the top with Cassidy and goes downhill from there. I really think everyone on this team and associated with the team says, well, look what happened last year in the playoffs. They're going to be fun. They're going to be fun. I did not have a fairy dust mention on the bingo card today. Did not. Noah Hannafin, goal number 13 on the season on the power play, continues to impress, and maybe there's more ways that they could utilize him in the lineup, correct? As a center? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, mean, I mean he's physical and, and, yeah, no, and Hannafin listen Hannafin is checking the box and we talked last week where would this team be without Hannafin 24 minutes of ice time plays on every special crazy. team situation I mean what what there, there's what what can you say about him right now you can you can definitely say that uh Hagen and White Cloud need to learn a little more from him um Haig has been paired with Hannafin and it's really helped Haig's game I think a lot but not last night, unfortunately. And um, you look at Haig's numbers. Haig has certainly fallen off a lot. Him and White Cloud both from a year-over-year perspective. So mm -hmm. Hannafin coming in has at least alleviated that pressure a little bit. And, you know, I really think maybe third Wednesday against Edmonton might be a good time for Ben Hutton to come back. The defense really just seemed to be clicking a bit differently when Hutton was in the lineup. Yeah, they definitely need that spark. Coming up next, last night was Tomas Hurdle's VGK debut. We're going to talk about how Hurdle fared last night. We'll talk about that when we return right here on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights. It is playoff time in the National Basketball Association and in the NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single game. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets, guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. But on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, it's all on the app that is safe, it is secure, and very much easy to use. What are you waiting for? Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make your first bet an automatic win. Go to FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Back on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights, Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen. We appreciate it every day. You can find us, of course, on places like Apple. You can go to Odyssey as well. And we are wherever, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. And don't forget, Fridays are WTF, What the Friday. Saturdays are reserved for the Chris Times Chris Show. And that is our YouTube exclusive, so check that out. And make sure that you do subscribe to Lockdown Golden Knights on the YouTube channel. First game last night for for Tomas Hurdle, and uh, we're going to talk in this segment about how we feel he could impact VGK. And I know Cassidy probably doesn't want to talk about a player after just one game, but we will. He spent uh, 20 minutes, 20 seconds on the ice last night. 352 on the power play unit. 21 shifts last night. Uh, minus one on the ice. He had an assist. Uh, Hurdle was really good in the faceoff circle last night, particularly late in the game. And watching the Coyotes game the other night, Chris, uh, seven of the top 10 teams in the faceoff circle winning faceoffs, seven of the top 10 are playoff teams. We've talked about winning faceoffs before and the importance of that. 67% in the faceoff circle. He won six out of nine. On the other side of the coin, Jack Eichel, four of 17 in the circle. Four. I was going to say that if you if you didn't. Even though, I mean, the guy cheats with the longer stick and everything should win every single faceoff. 
Okay, but I do feel that Hurdle added another element for VGK. Question is, question is, can the chemistry develop with Hurdle in the lineup now as you only have, what, six, seven games, seven games remaining now in the season? So can they develop chemistry now with another new addition uh, to this lineup? Hurdle's got 713 career regular season games, 62 playoff games. Seen a lot of the Golden Knights over the last uh, seven years of his National Hockey League career, and the dude knows hockey pretty well. So Hurdle's going to be fine. The rest of the players around him, I think, are going to be just fine as well. And, you know, you kind of look at the way Hurdle measures up. It really seems like the Golden Knights are trying to replicate as best they can Mark Stone. There are different players to a degree, but both both players have good net front presence. Cassie talked a lot about that uh, prior to the game, uh, the bumper position and everything. Um, you've mentioned the face-offs and all that. So Hurdle's going to be fine as far as all of that stuff goes. And there's six games left. I mean, I, I used a Rubik's Cube analogy, right? Last year, the, the Rubik's Cube was solved sometime right after the All-Star break as far as the right lineup and chemistry and everything. It's taking a little longer this year. It's taking a little longer this year. And the goal is just for the team to be clicking maybe around game 81 and 82. So when game 83 starts, things look a little better for the Golden Knights. Um, I liked Hurdle in front of the net. Dude just goes straight to the front of the nets. Mm -hmm. And he's not afraid to mix it up before the whistle, in a, in a jailbreak situation. At the, at the end of the play, after the whistle, he has no fear of just getting right in someone's face. How many hits did he take to make plays yesterday? I mean, he he drew one he drew a penalty for, and he took a real tough hit later in the game. I just hope he's not going to get hurt playing that that style of hockey right now. That would be terrible if he got hurt right now. So Hurdle's going to bring a lot of grit to the lineup, a lot of the things we were concerned about in the first segment, I think. Yeah. So this is a new edition of VGK. It seemed more like uh, like Bobby Brown or his he, the Ronnie DeVoe of the new edition, the group new edition. Uh, okay. Will they move? Will they move eventually? Um, Tomas hurdle to the center position, natural position. And then also screwing around with the cap here. It is Stanley cap time again here in Vegas. Um, are they going to, how did they get him on the ice last night? First of all, Oh, uh, will Carrier Carrier, Carrier was the, was the answer, and Brendan Brisson sent down. So I, I, I did a big thing where I thought the Golden Knights were going to end up going eleven seven yesterday. I forgot that Hurdle was replacing somebody in the lineup for whatever reason. I thought that I wasn't counting Hurdle as being an active player. I was only looking at his money and such. So I thought I went on a little bit of a. Of a I spent a lot of time twisting the dials when I didn't need to yesterday. So it wasn't too hard for Hurdle to get back get into the Golden Knights lineup thankfully i mean of all the issues the golden knights have salary salary is not one of them right now tony go figure go figure it's just funny the narrative in vgk land currently is we'll be fine again we're just going to be fine we're, don't hey no time to panic okay they're going to get into the playoffs but they still do yeah. have so much to solve here yes uh what did you notice what again was most impressive of hurdles game last night that you think can start to develop here in the final few games of the season gets inside um gets inside you saw vancouver do that you saw connor garland uh, get two goals by out muscling as coach cassidy very calculatedly is calculatedly a word that is i like that use of that word it's good so coach it's cassidy better than never, using fairy never, dust yeah, don't use fairy dust. That again. was good. Cassie never mincing words. He mentioned that Connor Garland out muscled and outworked Braden McNabb and Nick Hague last night. A couple pretty big dudes on the team. And not that Connor Garland you're gonna take anything away from, but McNabb and Hague are two players in the NHL that just shouldn't be getting pushed off pucks. So on the flip side of that, I really think that's where Hurdle is going to help the Golden Knights from an offensive standpoint. When the playoffs do start, there's so many gritty and ugly and weird goals that simply go go in because there's traffic in front of the net or people are in the right place and talked about hurdle in his 700 games of NHL experience this year right now might be his best shot at a winner he hasn't experienced this in a long time I mean the San Jose Sharks had a playoff run from 2015 
to 2019. And then, well, the rest is um, bad. So, you know, Hurdle certainly understands the magnitude and gravity of the situation, and he's going to do whatever he can to get his first ring and be one of the first players that would have the Stanley Cup pass to him. But there's a long way to go before that can happen, starting with the Golden Knights just trying to get right. And they're not right right now. You look at the last the four periods, right, from that Coyotes game. Golden Knights gave up six to the Coyotes on Friday nights. And then uh, in the first two periods, so in a three-period span, the Golden Knights gave up ten goals. The puck got behind Logan Thompson nine times. Yeah. And you have to be concerned. We'll talk about that in the next segment about the goaltending situation. I know that uh, Vancouver of late, they're talking about protecting Quinn Hughes down the stretch here, down the final stretch. Who does VGK need to protect so that they don't get injured heading into the playoffs? VGK, five-point lead right over St. Louis. They can jockey for a little bit more position there with Nashville right there um, with the L.A. Kings and what have you. It's not going to matter too, too much. Uh, at what point do they just go into protection mode, make sure that they clean up some of the elements of their game, and then move forward? Because right now, uh, it doesn't seem like they have that spark and that fire, but they do need to develop some sort of chemistry um, and they need to get some of that fire back heading into the playoffs. I feel as though, like you said, I feel as though this team just believes that they could turn it on and off at any given point, and that's not going to be the case. They're going to need some momentum, and maybe Chicago and Anaheim, that might do it for them uh, down late in the season because it's rigged. Uh, but that might help them to get and work in, on a few things to get back in shape there in order, things in order heading into the playoffs. The Golden Knights went into protection mode November 14th. It's not when, when are, when's it going to happen? It already happened back in November, I think. Um, after that hot start, just they, okay, here's a week. Here's what the, this team is capable of doing. Now let's relax and tell them that's not what really happened, but that's what it feels like. Um, diving into the standings, two points behind Nashville, one game in hand. That's for wild card number one. And then the Golden Knights are one point behind the L.A. Kings. Same number of games played. And uh, we're not going to talk about catching Edmonton or Vancouver anymore because, well, the Golden Knights couldn't beat Vancouver in, in Arizona. So wild card one or Pacific three are or wild card two are, I mean, listen, the Blues technically could get there, but the Blues aren't going to catch the Golden Knights. If they do, fine, whatever. Um where would the Golden Knights rather be, I think, is what you're looking at. And Dallas seems like they got their stuff together. Vancouver, I'm okay with the Golden Knights matching up against. Edmonton, I have I got a little more fear of Edmonton. I'm not going to lie, but it's not because of Edmonton. It's because of the Golden Knights and just how they're going. Um, I think your first question is who the Golden Knights can afford not to lose if something were to happen. Uh, uh, I go if, if teams are going to go head hunting, yeah, be careful Eichel, and protect Eichel. percent of you take Eichel out of this lineup, uh, book book your golf trip, folks. You the okay. Gold Knights will sneak into the playoffs, but uh, they won't get passed around without Jack Eichel, even though he's four of 17 in the circle. Protect him. Uh, coming up next, <laughs> coming up next, Logan Thompson took his second L in a row. Talk about inconsistent. Will Aiden Hill return? on Wednesday to net against Edmonton. We'll talk about that. Who will own this net? Talk about all that when we return right here on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights. You could win, you definitely win big. There, there we go. Download the app, the Sleeper app, and get the up to $100 match on your very first deposit. Use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL. You could win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper. The official daily fantasy app of the Lockdown NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. What players would you take this week to win 100 times your money? And you could connect with other fans and you can pick a lot of the studs around the National Hockey League who will record more or less than their Sleeper projections for areas like goals, assists, saves plus minus in a given game and more to win a hundred times your bet on sleeper. It's pretty simple. You need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. It's like a eight team parlay for sure. 
Uh, you heard us, VGK fans. You can win 100 times your money by playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention. Nail your picks so that you can start winning big. Use the promo code Lockdown NHL. You'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code Lockdown NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use. Welcome back. Is that a little Chris chirping this morning? Uh, welcome He's back. He's outside my office. He is? Okay. Welcome back on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. We appreciate you, especially our everydayers. Make sure that you subscribe to Locked On Golden Knights on the YouTube channel. Uh, so Aiden Hill, apparently ready to return. Now it's Hill's net again. This is crazy. This carousel for VGK. And again, so many questions here going into the playoffs. And that's the one area that is of great concern uh, for me. Aiden Hill, sure to return against Edmonton, perhaps on Wednesday, 18, 10, and 2. Last played on March the 23rd. How is this going to work out? Do they just ride Aiden Hill now into the sunset? The last two games, you could bring up uh, Patera and Seville. They're not going to need those last two games. So, okay, let's just say the next five games. For our um, I think the goal is so a couple things. Right now, I don't care about the stats. I don't care about the win losses. I don't care about the save percentages. I don't care that Aiden Hill was the goalie last year that won, that was on the ice when the team won a Stanley Cup. The next five games are going to determine who starts game one. It felt like for about a two-week span, this was Logan's net, no questions asked. He has since has given that up. He has given up any leverage he had over Aiden Hill in his last two starts. And it's unfortunate, but that's the reality. And if you think I'm being harsh on Logan Thompson, how do you think Sean Burke is right now? Well, you don't want a notebooks. Um, tonight, let last night. Last night was Logan's ninth appearance in 22 days. Hill had nine appearances over 26 days. That's a concern for me, how the Golden Knights have utilized the goaltenders, yes. especially when someone else has been down. So I went digging. I went digging. We're going back to a September the 22nd uh, during the preseason when I asked Coach Cassidy and Kelly McCrimmon about the goalie situation. Uh, first of all, Cassidy, how we divide up their starts, question mark. Let's get through training camp, make a decision who's going to play a little bit more or if the net's going to be split equally. We're not playing one guy like 60 games. I can promise you that. He's going to make good on that, by the way. That's, it's working out. Will one play more than the other? That'll be decided down the road by how they play. I don't think one will play a lot more than the other. Injuries have Injuries have basically forced Cassidy's hand in that. So... Going forward, I wanted to see how McCrimmon felt in the events Logan or Aiden went down or both. And here's a Kelly McCrimmon's response. It was interesting last year. No goaltending injuries for 54, 55 games, and we had a number of them. This year, we got Logan and Aiden coming in healthy, feeling at the top of their game. Fair statement so far. We did get a chance to evaluate Yuri in NHL games. Of course, you get to see the players in the American League when you get a chance, whether it's Dorfia, Korzak, Pahal, the guys that come up and play NHL games. It really helps paint a picture in your mind of what their capabilities might be. I think we liked what we saw with Yuri, and he's the number three goalie in our situation. If we had an injury, he'd be called upon. B.S. B. Bringing S with a capital period in between the B and the S right there. But has played six games this entire year with Aiden Hill and Logan Thompson being out. I'm not saying Patera is the man by any means, but they have no confidence in him. There's no. zero confidence. No. There is zero confidence in Yuri Patera. And if that was an issue, the Golden Knights should have addressed that, which Tony, you've been saying that since the frigging off season, you've been on, yeah. you've been on the ball about that a hundred thousand percent. And, you know, fortunately, the Golden Knights haven't had to go deeper than Yuri Patera. But you can't tell me with Aiden and Logan both being unavailable for long stretches at the times this year that Patera shouldn't have had more than six appearances coming in April the 9th. Of those teams that VGK can potentially face in the playoffs, which one concerns you the most? Dallas, because they're hot. This Vancouver team, once they're 100% and they're healthy and they get Demko back in the lineup, 
they could score from every position. And that kind of concerns me, especially the way VGK is limping into the playoffs. Yeah. You're I mean, concerned about Edmonton. It's again, I'm concerned about everybody. Like, you know, that's, it's the playoffs, right? You know, 16 teams, you can make a legit case for every one of them to win a Stanley cup. I mean, I don't, when you, you look at the history of teams that have won from the eight and the seven and the sixties and stuff like that, you don't need to be the top seed, which the golden Knights are hoping that proves true again. If there's a team I would like to avoid, I'll start by Dallas. Dallas feels like a wagon right now. Ottinger's playing well. So many other bets in that lineup and, uh, Young kids like Robo and uh, Jason Robertson and Wyatt Johnson, just amazing talents, having a great year. Edmonton, I don't worry about as much as Dallas. Vancouver, I don't worry about as much as Dallas or Edmonton. There you go. Mm, pretty interesting. Um, oh, I was at the former Dollar Loan Center last night. They changed everything, including Jumbotron to Lee's Family Forum. So that awaits all the fans over there. Another L for our volleyball team, just struggling right now. So ah, we came into, we were the last team to come into the league, right? We're talking about the Vegas throw. And so you just piece things together there. We'll get it straight. We'll be awesome. really good next season. The games are entertaining. They're fun. It's a great family atmosphere. I think those are the boxes that from the business side, you worry about checking and the rest will take care of itself. Well, thank you. And I appreciate that. The business side. And then uh, next week on the 17th, we've got VGK night. So I'm going to try to put together some ticket giveaways for us on here. So that should be fun. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun there that night, the 17th. Mark that on your calendar. And mark tomorrow morning. Wednesday night. It's a Wednesday, next Wednesday. Well, yeah. Mark tomorrow on your calendar, too, to tune in as we uh, watch VGK's spiral here. And it is doom and gloom. Jeez. Yeah. It, it's been doom and gloom on state run here because everyone is just – Oh my goodness! They are no. They they games. they spent a good a good two minutes talking about all the injuries and players out in the third period. Injuries, yeah. <sighs> Come on, and that's two part nothing of the culture here. Clear the net. I don't care who the players are on the ice. I don't. Care. Right, don't care. right. That's part of the culture here. It's like making excuses again, and I, it's not going to fly here. Not going to fly. We'll see. This is the danger zone for VGK heading into the playoffs. Good tomorrow I've heard the I just heard the keyboards playing and I see top I see Tom Cruise up there flying around and yeah okay. not new edition no okay <laughs> no. tomorrow of course uh, the preview of uh, did you know the new game. new edition like members off the top of your head Tony or was that sitting on your screen in front of you at least I need to know that. no I know a little oh. bit about new edition who's in Millie That's Vanilli fine. just Millie and Vanilli exactly you guys mm-hmm. coming up tomorrow's show of course we'll talk more hockey nonsense Check out uh, not, at talk TV nonsense, just nonsense. Tweet. Take the hockey out of the equation, just nonsense. I'm sure I'll have more updates on the new arena situation there in uh, Scottsdale. He's very much up to date on that. We appreciate you tuning in. There was some fun yesterday about that. Not not me, not me. The mayor of Scottsdale put some salt on that. We'll talk. We'll, we'll hit that a little bit tomorrow. That was actually pretty fun. Okay. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Locked On Golden Knights, Friday's WTF, Saturday, Chris and Chris Show. Former man, Chris Garlic. I'm Tony Cardasco from Las Vegas. We'll see you tomorrow on another new edition of this show right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Take care.